Good evening, this is Mr. Ferreira and I'm going to be giving this talk on the influence of early attachment on relationships and this is the last video in the series of attachment for A-level psychology. And we see quite specifically that it does refer to both childhood and adult relationships so therefore we can consider friendships and romantic relationships and uh, and other forms of relationships that could be associated during this time. It also asks us to include the internal work model so therefore you can see quite a lot of this content is a repetition of what we've kind of seen before. And I suppose it comes from this basic premise that uh, Bowlby and a number of other theorists would have said saying attachment is necessary for healthy psychological de development so actually saying that we need to have attachment in order to be uh, developed kind of in a healthy way. Now, Bowlby did say that a child's first relationship is the most important uh, relationship. Uh, remember, he has this whole monotropy uh, theory. We see that this is coming from quite a late part in his career, 1969. And he speaks about a mental representations uh, you can obviously kind of draw your mind back on when we did this with Bowlby, also your cognitive theory that's talking about kind of schemas and things like that. He does qualify this as a form of schema um, and he calls this the internal working model. And so um, a schema just kind of helps our brains kind of um, kind of get to a conclusion kind of quicker um, and without having to kind of cause itself too much stress. And the reason that we would have this particular internal working model, according to Bowlby, is it says here, it enables the individual to predict and control the environment. So clearly one of the, the features of attachment is that it helps us to kind of predict and control the environment. And Bowlby does talk about secure base behavior. Now you could possibly kind of imagine that this is quite straightforward then, that if it's the first attachment that we're looking at, that um, we see that you can either have a good or bad attachment. Um, and obviously, so something like a loving relationship will result in the child kind of making assumptions about how relationships um, are meant to be. So, of course, it's that initial experience that potentially reflected on the later experience. Likewise, if you have a bad experience, we'll see that these bad experiences will also then bear on later relationships so kind of think about this in terms of a model some kind of construction being built that if you have kind of an uninterrupted kind of model building um, based on kind of good um, kind of instructions and good kind of care it's going to result in a good model however if if those instructions aren't clear if perhaps the model is broken halfway or stopped repeatedly we're going to have a potentially bad model so all of this is kind of inter internal. Now, that is obviously something which you do need to be able to express in terms of how the internal working model influences future relationships. But we can look at some other theorists as well um, that can help us understand how a child may behave based on the internal uh, working model. So it says uh, they may struggle to form relationships in the first place or may not behave appropriately when they have them. And of course, the theorists that we have, there's quite a few out there. I, I don't think the names are really that important, but of course you may want to refer to the names depending on kind of your style of writing or how much knowledge or depth of understanding you want to show in your essays. So the first people we turn to are Pryor and Glasser. And what they literally do is they look at your attachment type and your social functioning. And we see several things. So we would expect that the secure attachment has positive outcomes and ultimately results in a child or a person that grows up to be less emotionally dependent. Now, there's nothing kind of wrong with being emotionally dependent when it's appropriate, but, but kind of to be over dependent on somebody else could be problematic. And we see also that Pry and Glasser kind of talk about higher achievement or as an outcome for secure attachment. When we look at insecure avoidant, we see that they have a potential aggressiveness and and general negative effect. So general negative effect is a bit like kind of being down or depressed. Um, and you could also look at 
aggressiveness. Now, this is the avoidant child, um, and we can see the link later to how they were potentially looked after as, as a child in terms of what um, Ainsworth kind of observed. But you could argue that if they're avoidant, Ainsworth told us that they had mothers that were uncaring, so therefore the aggressiveness could come from that in terms of kind of like this anger that they weren't cared for and why didn't they care for. Likewise, you can also see the negative effect coming from that kind of maybe feeling as if they kind of, you know, I don't want to diminish it, but this kind of the sadness about why weren't they loved. In contrast, we see the resistant attachment doesn't have um, aggression but has greater anxiety um, and and of course if we are anxious that we're likely to withdraw as well so this anxiety could come from the the unknown the predict and control situation because it causes great anxiety when you don't know what's going to happen and we see that resistant children had parents that were inconsistent and so therefore we're not always kind of sure what was going to happen so that's prion glass they give us quite a quite easy kind of labels for this Ainsworth will also have a lot to say with this and she's looking at the specific child and the mother's behavior the child and the mother's behavior and and she ultimately proposes the caregiver sensitivity hypothesis so this is fairly straightforward in terms of of kind of a hypothesis if we look at kind of this idea of a correlation so there's a positive correlation you could have maybe your um, sensitivity here and your attachment type here. And we see that as the sensitivity increases, so does the attachment increase. Now, I don't want you to over um, over exaggerate kind of the difficulty or the uh, kind of this idea of sensitivity as well, because being sensitive to a child's need actually sometimes can be quite complex as a parent. Um, for example, if you have a child that is tired and therefore um, really needs to sleep um, but is misbehaving, for example, or you leave the room and she starts crying, um, you then have that difficulty. What is the greater need? The comfort that they are seeking or the fact that they are tired and kind of knowing exactly what to do in that particular context. But um, Ainsworth did observe that the mothers that were more sensitive to the child's needs were the ones that had secure attachment. So she goes on to say that ultimately it's the sensitivity that resulted in the mothers kind of being able to accept or kind of the mothers that are accessible to the child. And so, of course, they have a good view of themselves. Now, once again, we see the avoidant child. They see themselves as being unworthy. Now, this is linked to being rejected and, and not having much attention paid to them. And then also, quite tragically, we see with the resistant child that they might exaggerate the emotional responses based on the fact that their care was inconsistent. And we see this here. The mothers were often occupied with routine activities when holding the infant, something which obviously as a parent I do concern myself of, especially these days with mobile phones and electronic devices and things like that, is that are we kind of giving our children the kind of wrong type of message in terms of kind of their care. Now Jared McCarthy, once again I don't feel this is a name we need to remember. He um, was able to express that avoidant children tend to have problems with romantic relationships and that resistant children tend to have problems with friendships. And now this could easily be linked back to Ainsworth. If we consider in terms of avoidant, okay so we go back here, we see they're unworthy, perhaps rejecting, um, and so therefore their problems with romantic relationships is that they may not trust or want to enter into a relationship with somebody, or if they're in a relationship with somebody, they might not give them that particular attention or care that they, that they need. Likewise, we see that if you are resistant and you exaggerate your emotional response, you may well be quite needy and difficult to have as a friend, and so therefore you have difficulty with friendship. But there we go, we have several different um, kind of people telling us about those specific types of attachment and the future relationships. What we have in terms of um, this last study by Hazan and Shaver, we've, we've mentioned this before in the attachment section, but this is the love quiz. 
And what we do is we just have a bit more detail about this. We now know that it was a kind of a quiz published in a newspaper that had 620 um, replies. We also know that we have three sections to it. One of them is going to be about the person's most important relationships. The other one is going to be about their general experiences in love. And the final one, of course, is going to assess their attachment types. And so from this particular love quiz, we can find out several things about attachment types and also their views on love. So first of all, we did find that the majority of them were still securely attached, but we see quite a high percentage of insecure resistant and insecure avoidant children. We see that the, those that were securely attached have good views of, of um, love and romantic relationships. And of course, they see things like love as being durable and supportive. Of course, in contrast, we have your insecure avoidant revealing jealousy and the fear of intimacy. That was obviously quite prob problematic because they view love as being rare and fragile. And of course, once again, this idea of kind of um, avoidant, perhaps you're unworthy of being loved, perhaps you feel that your partner is, is going to love somebody else. You can quite clearly see where this is heading towards. So we have several kind of findings here and basically telling us that our attachment behavior potentially is reflected in romantic relationships. Okay, so of course very kind of, I wouldn't call them straightforward, um, but clearly um, studies that can help us understand early attachment and, and um, future relationships. In terms of the evaluation points, okay, so we kind of link, try and link some of these ideas. And so I talk about the continuity between early attachment and later emotional behavior. I'm um, kind of seeing that if they have this attachment type as a child, you go on to have an attachment type later on. So Shroff, for example, followed a number of children um, from one year to adolescence. So looking at their attachment type, continue to have a look at them when they're older. And of course, what we see, the securely attached child, once again, having higher levels of social competence. So therefore, this is a good thing in terms of kind of wanting to be securely attached. We see them feeling less isolated, being more popular, and of course, being more empathetic. Um, and they were rated by a number of different people um, that ultimately demonstrates that this is quite a, a sound judgment on these particular children. So it demonstrates the importance of continuity and attachment. But I do kind of have a kind of comeback here in terms of a however point. I do say Zimmerman assessed the infant's attachment type and ad adolescent attachment to parents. And there was a very little relationship between quality of infant and attachment type, adolescent attachment type. So um, it, it is something that potentially can be affected by later experiences as well. And of course, this kind of brings into this idea that maybe Kagan could ha have something to say ab about this. And we use his temperamental hypothesis to pretty much kind of argue that, look, it could just be down to um, this child being being um, being easy to get along with and, and, and not about how sensitive the carer was. And, and of course, this is a concern because it says that it's that if you're just difficult or easy to go along with and that is a re reflected in the adult relationships that a child that has an easy temperament has easy relationships so to speak now of course the biggest concern we do have about this type of, of research is it says here the issues of validity and um, because we can't really assess them too clearly so it says here most studies of attachment to primary caregivers and other significant people do not make use of the strange situation um, so so we can't definitely make an assertion about the attachment type. Um, but of course, this is because they are older, and so therefore it's very difficult to understand. So we see, first of all, um, in terms of making this assessment later on in life, it relies on self-report techniques, um, and uh, like interviews and questionnaires. And of course, they could be wrong. It says here, questionnaires and interviews are limited because they depend on respond respondents being honest um, and also having quite a realistic view of their own relationships. So therefore, we can't really tell what it is that these particular attachment types are or potentially the experiences because, you know, when you do the memory topic, you might kind of see that we do kind of have this uh, kind of capacity to, c to construct our own memories. 
We also see the second problem with the validity issue. It says here, um, looking back in adulthood at one's earlier relationship, probably lacks validity because it relies on accurate re recollections. Okay, um, and and that's this idea that we can't actually honestly kind of remember some things from our childhood because it's such a long time ago, and of course our brains were developed differently then and we've had many experiences since. So there you can see two or three simple points that we could use in an essay questioning kind of the reality of infant attachment types and future relationships. I'm um, just, uh, just reminded that there's in the knowledge section there were several different pieces of research that we that we used to, to demonstrate the knowledge section. Um, of course if we don't use it in the knowledge section we can use it as research support in terms of our evaluation points and we see kind of questions like this and um, this was actually a very good question I remember marking it it says here Abby has a happy secure childhood um, and talks about that then it says referring to Abby and the family explain what psychologists have discovered about the internal working model and what was really important here that is that people were quite e easily able to kind of say that Abby was securely attached um, and therefore she had a, a secure internal working model but they kind of failed to kind of refer to the idea that this meant that when she was with her own children, the internal working model meant that she was kind of a good parent and also offered them a secure childhood. And ultimately, we can see this because her friends, as her children are easy, easily able to make friends. Then, of course, there's this short essay. It says, discuss research into the influence. So we're just kind of going through the content, explaining the knowledge about early attachment and adult relationships. It is specifically adult relationships, um, and then of course deciding to um, to discuss it in the evaluation points. So there we there we have it. Um, in terms of the content, the mark scheme actually says Bowlby's internal working model model, um, Hazen and Shaver are kind of important parts of that particular research. We also see. Um, there are evaluation points about it says issues of determinism, um, but I've kind of got issues with the actual methodology here, saying that it's very difficult to draw conclusions from kind of knowledge that has to be remembered. Um, counter evidence as well. Um, so I haven't mentioned deprivation or privation, kind of saying that other forms of kind of relationships, um, kind of from. Um, kind of Romanian orphans and things like that potentially tell us that children can recover um, if they if they don't have an early attachment figure. So I'm hoping that this is something that you can engage in. Certainly consider writing the essay. Now this is the full 16 marker. It says discuss research into the influence of childhood on adult relationships and you just simply need to go through that particular content. So there we have it. We have the final topic is done. The attachment section is finished. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these videos and that they've been helpful to you. Um, take care and bye.